Hello, everyone. Welcome to Smooth Sailing Conversations. I'm Shaniqua Dupree, and today's guest is retired Master Chief and real estate broker owner of Our Nation Realty, Ronisha Nation. Thank mm. you so much for being with us today. It's always so exciting to get people who have um, <clears throat> went the full experience in the military, you know, all, all the way to retirement. But um, we're going to go ahead and jump into the questions. So can you share your, can you share about your military background? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, first of all, but definitely. Um, so I joined the Navy out of Atlanta, um, traditional boot camp in uh, the Great Lakes as an air traffic controller. So I was an AC, went down to Pensacola, um, went to A school. Um, I started out as an E1, uh, went up to Brunswick, Maine, did a carrier to George Washington. I taught on instructor duty in Pensacola for five years, pre-commissioned the USS America, um, went to Fast Fact San Diego, and then I retired from TACRON 12, which is on Naval Amphibious Base on Coronado. So what do you think transitioning military service members should know? That it's okay. You know, if you do two years, four years, whatever your contract time is, if you serve honorably, then be proud of your service. You don't have to be scared. Um, there are so many opportunities through the VA that I'm learning about. Active duty, we don't really learn so much until it's time to get out, right? Mm -hmm. But once you see how much the VA have to offer you, it will make you feel a lot more confident. Um, and I'll also say the Navy has a lot to offer you. Take advantage of all of it um, and prepare yourself because regardless if you do two years, 20 years, 30 years, your time will come to an end. So uh, start being prepared. Come in with the plan if you can. Um, and come in with your exit plan and you will never feel like you just have to stay. You can stay because you choose to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Like, in my mind, when I think of a chief retiring from the military, I think of them holding on so tight to the <laughs> service that they've that they've had, right? And I want to know your experience as a chief getting all the way to retirement, you know, you spending 20 years in the military. How was that transition for you? I'm not going to lie. You know, I've recently retired. So my retirement was April 22nd. Okay. And um, when I, when I, I was preparing myself and, you know, I started doing real estate about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So I've been preparing myself for this moment, just like I said, but the camaraderie is different. And when I got out, uh, just going through this process over the last few weeks, it has been a mental transition that I wasn't expecting. So yes, I did have a financial plan. Yes, I did have a plan for a job, but there is some mental, um, and, I, and me talking to uh, other retirees and asking that real question, because a lot of people don't want to say that, you know, um, but me being able to go and say, hey, I've been having some issues that I wasn't prepared or thinking I was going to have. And they were like, yeah, I had that too. just stay with it. You're going to be OK. Know that this thing, these feelings are normal um, and you're going to get through it just, you know. So I'm not going to imply that it's been like cartwheels and hunky dory like I was just peace out. I had a great experience in the Navy, but when I knew that it was my time to go, but I did think it would be a little bit less um, mentally challenged. I wasn't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So and that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. OK. OK. My next question is, what's the hardest thing? you've had to face while serving and how did you overcome? Ooh, Jesus. You know, uh, I was young when I got promoted to chief. I was a woman. I was a black woman. And all of those things come with separate challenges. You know, um, there is a lot of, you know, being in the Navy, there's things happen so fast. You have to be ready to continue, continuously evolve, continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a lot of people who aren't prepared for those changes. Mm -hmm. And so me being this new girl, funny, just ready to have having fun, but also serious about my business that everybody was not excited about that, you know, believe it or not. But I'm glad that I was able to connect with the people, my sailors, and continue to get them um, inspired to do what needed to be done. And um, because of them, I've had a great career. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome to hear. That's really great to hear. Um, so what was that struggle? Like, what was the thing that you had to face that was super hard? And how did you like, what did you put in place to overcome that? Um, 
my network of people. So I would say uh, a lot of it, just you you don't know what you don't know. Um, I was speak about the experience I had pre-commissioning an amphib. You don't know how to build programs from the ground up. You don't know how to, um, you don't know a lot of things about putting together a ship, putting together that you think you do. But when you get that dropped in your, your lap, you got to get your sailors qualified. You got to make sure you have sailors to get qualified. You got to make sure that policies and procedures are properly drafted for the future deployment teams. Um, that was that was complicated. But my network, the chief's mess, meeting the right people, not being so arrogant to not ask questions. And that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. They try to figure it out secretly. Um, I was not that person. I would pick up the phone in a heartbeat and say, hey, bro, can you help me out? This is my experience. I've never been on an amphib before. Can you give me some of your uh, advice on how I should deal with this? And I listened more than anything. I was willing to listen um, to people who have experienced it before, people who were smarter than me, because there are a lot of people that are smarter than me, both senior and junior. And I was willing to listen to them. And I feel like that was what uh, what garnered my success. Yeah, I think that if a lot of us will humble ourselves and listen to what others have to say and not have to figure it out on uh, figure it out on our own, we will be so much more ahead. Now, yeah, on on smooth sailing conversations, I like to ask some some things that a lot of us who have served, like we know, right? Um, and I, I like to ask their experiences in these matters. So, um, when we are junior sailors mm-hmm. and we're trying to become a chief, or we're trying to get the top eval, so we can set it all up for it to, you know, get us to our point that we need to get to. But we keep meeting with these crazy chain of commands. Like you can do all that you want to do, but then your chain of command, whether it's your LPO, your DLCPO, department head, the CO, whoever it is, it's like they're stopping you. How do you get to the point? Like you said, you were young. How old were you? Um, when I, what do you mean when I made, made chief? chief. Mm-hmm. I was at eight years. Yeah. So you were, you were an eight year chief, right? Not everybody can do that. Like that is, especially when you're growing in yourself and mm-hmm. you, you're not confident in yourself um, or even when you are confident, it's like so many different things that go into it. But how would, like what kind of um, um, like recommendations or advice will you give someone who is like having a hard time? They love the Navy. They want to make chief. They would love to be an eight year chief, but it's like every command that they go to somebody is somebody in the chain of command that gives them a hard time that wants to block that EP eval what kind of advice would you give them you know unfortunately there are this is a human uh human process right and there are situations that happen like that but one thing that I learned from my experience when I got promoted for chief it was I was not expecting it Mm -hmm. um to be honest I hadn't even had anybody look at my record up until that point and give me. So I was really just loving what I was doing. I was going after different jobs that I was excited about. Um, I was excited to learn and I was also excited to to teach. So because of that, I just kept doing it and I got promoted. And when I what I realized from my personal experience and me talking to other people were just so frustrated because. They were trying to beat the process. They were trying to take shortcuts and, okay, well, they said I need to do these check in the block items and this was going to work, but it didn't work for me. Yeah, just do what you have to do from your heart. Do the things that make you happy. Continue to personally uh, develop yourself and continue to personally evolve. Take on duty stations that are going to be that's going to challenge you. And then remember to give back. Remember to continue to pull people up. And when you do things out of passion, when you do things out of your heart, when you don't get promoted, it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. But if you do those things, more than likely you are because you're, um, the attitude, the energy, the positivity that you bring to the work center is going to change that environment. And, and things, you you know, when you, when you put that type of stuff out, it comes back to you. Mm-hmm. So I would just say, be you, be happy, um, Take advantage of every opportunity and not because you want somebody to look at you, but because you want to grow personally, you want to be better personally, take on those hard roles, not because, again, somebody is saying that that's what you have to do, 
but because you know that those are challenging roles. And, and when you think about who's getting selected at those Chiefs board, we're looking at the best of the best. You know, we got the best of the best competing. And if you are taking on roles that aren't um, competitive, that's uh, considered easy but fun, you know, um, and I'm not going to say a, a duty station or location because everybody's rating is different. But um, you taking on those duty stations that we know are not as challenging, you, it's hard for you to say that you are competing, you know, with the best of the best. And you get in those roles and you have fun and you do your best you know, things are going to happen for you. But if you are chasing it because somebody told you to do it, it's going to be a slap in the face every time. And I've seen it over and over again. Yeah. While you were talking, I don't know what made me think about it. You said you were down in Pensacola for five years. Mm -hmm. Was that your last duty station? No, it no. wasn't, right? No, that was the duty station where I made chief. Okay. Um, it was in the middle of my career. What did you do? What was that duty station again in Pensacola? I was on instructor duty instructor duty mm -hmm. um hang i know i was listening to i don't know if it was the first class or chief i was down in um at recruiting school going on recruiting duty mm -hmm. and they were talking about a lot of people a lot of chiefs come to recruiting duty um and it like boosts their um it, i guess it boosts their career like it's a career booster yeah absolutely um, would you say that instructor duty was a career booster as well yeah, RDC, instructor duty, recruiting, those are all sailorization billets. And I say, always look to give back. Where are you touching people at the most? You know, on instructor duty, there's no other duty station where you're going to touch the amount of air traffic controllers that I touched while I was there. Recruiting duty, how, how many people you bring into the Navy, look at the impact that you have. Mm -hmm. You know, going to RDC duty, look at the impact that you have. You know, those are uh, sailorization duties. So when I say, you know, you learn and you grow, but you give back, that's the that's what I'm talking about. That's good. That is really good. I think that is going to help a lot of people because, I mean, most of us, we want to go to the places like Hawaii or Japan because yeah. we want to get that um, that experience in that location. But I don't really think we pay too much attention to <laughs> what are we actually doing there and who we're impacting. Because, yeah. I mean... When you think about your eval, it's it's about a whole bunch of numbers. How many um how many uh recruits did you get in the military this month, or how many uh, new recruit or uh, new recruiters did you train this month? How many of those passed with flying colors? Like that all really makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's fun. And I would never ever ever tell anybody don't go to Hawaii, don't go to Italy, don't because those are life experiences that you cannot. You know, you can't recreate that it, outside of the Navy, right? So if that's something that you're passionate about, that's something that you want to do, go over there, do it, do a great job there. And who knows, you know, you might get promoted from it. Um, and so I would never say don't do it because I am all about don't chase anything. Just live and, you know, be grateful for every day that you have. But so if you go to those duties and you love it and that's where you want to go, go and do the best job you can there. But if you think about impact, if you think about going to those duties, that's going to be hard. It's going to be long. There's going to be, you know, those are those get rewarded when you go to um, when the board is when you're competing against the rest of your peers. You know, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So now that I understand how it could have been a chief in eight years. Right. <laughs> um, but I understand that you understood your job. You knew what it is that. Um, that will make you successful in your career. And I'm not going to say you play the Navy game, but I'm going to say you figured out how to do Navy, right? Um, how did real estate really come about and how did you use that to plan for your exit? So the fun, it's funny because, you know, where I grew up, uh, I grew up, we was homeless a lot of the time of growing up. Um, so real estate and ownership wasn't something that, you know, was a part of my life growing up. And um, in the 2008, when the market crashed and you started seeing all these $50 houses everywhere, and there was a part of me that was like, I want that, I want that. But I had no clue how to do it. Um, I moved out to California, um, to San Diego in 2013. And I was living in this uh, really, really nice apartment, super expensive, because everything out here is pretty pricey. But even in 2013, it was expensive. And they were building a new construction townhouse community right across from my apartment complex. 
And I was just like, hmm, I'm gonna walk over there, you know, and just ask questions. And when I walked over there and I asked questions, not only did my was my place bigger, I was gonna be paying out less a month and I didn't even have to put, I actually got money back at the time. I was able to get money back from the builder because I was able to use my VA benefits, um, which was zero money down. They were offering incentives from the lender and the builder. So I was actually able to get like $1,300 back at closing by me spending a whole lot of money and um, that became a new purpose for me is to teach people like, look, you have these benefits, you have a VA loan, you have BAH, you're paying mortgage, it just may not be yours, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was something that I experienced. And because again, I'm, I'm a teacher at heart, mm-hmm. I became passionate about trying to share that um, with other people and how they can build wealth for themselves. Because you know, I did it and, and life has been very good for me since, mm-hmm. since I got into that business. Yeah. Hmm. I wish that I like real estate forever. Like even mm-hmm. as a kid, I, I liked looking at the dilapidated houses in my community mm-hmm. and just imagining how I can build it up. But I didn't start dabbling into real estate until 2013, 14 is when I just wanted to learn more about it. So mm-hmm. I found biggerpockets.com. I binged on all of their uh, podcasts. People would be buying multi-unit properties. I learned the burn method. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I learned fix and flip and wholesaling. I learned so much stuff from Bigger Pockets. Things I never yeah. even knew about. And then Price I bought my first house. In. Yeah, right, they right. Talk about everything there. Um, and then I bought my first house in 2016. It was like 2015 December or something like that. Um, so that's when I bought my first house and. One thing that they didn't really teach you is how to just be a normal house buyer, uh-huh. right? Because if you are a normal house buyer, then you, you to me, it's like easier to transition. You won't just be doing it for the money, right? Yeah. I feel like a lot of investors, we know that <laughs> if we buy a house, most likely we can figure out how to get out of it. But if we are just a regular old house buyer, we can pay attention to how to make it last for 30 years instead of just the five years of our investment. Right. Mm-hmm. And so mine didn't last 30 years. Um, I feel like I bought poorly. Um, I, I have my family in mind as opposed to aftermath in mind. I didn't pay attention to the fact that the house didn't sell, although it was on the market for two years. There's a reason why it didn't sell. Mm-hmm. And to me, I had in my mind as an investor, Oh, I can, I can put this wall up and I can add a bathroom and I can, you know, do a two level, like I had it, I had it all in my head, right? You do university, it'd be it right. people up. Yeah. It do, it do, but I did it. I did, I well, separated. That's, congratulations, that says a lot about who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fact that you was willing to take that risk and you was able to just, let me just try to make my life and my situation better. And let me give myself a chance at this. It says a whole lot about who you are. Cause there are a lot of people who, sit sit um on the bench watching and reading and reading and reading and listening and listening but never take action so that's Mm -hmm. amazing congratulations to you thank you thank you um now I was saying all that to get to I did that at the very last year of my active duty orders the Mm -hmm. very last year and I wasn't smart enough to do it ahead of time but I also didn't have anybody to really share with that share with me that experience Uh, Mm -hmm. someone who I could look up to People in the military, some people would talk about it, but it wasn't really, you know, out there. So, well, my first question is, do, have you talked to sailors about real estate investing and buying their first house? Yeah, so I was active. So to be honest, I would never work with my sailors directly, but I talked to all of my sailors about the benefits that they had. And I'm so blessed because I can name sailors after sailors who was at my first up at the command when I got my license, you know, and I talked to them about it and they all, not all of them, obviously, but I can name 10 off the bat that went out and purchased homes um, at that time. Mm-hmm. And they all either leveled up or bought additional property at this point and made over six figures. I can't think of one of them that did not make over six figures. And that was starting around like 2015, up until now and obviously we know we had the economic boom but san diego has always been so low on inventory i'm sorry i take that back i did have somebody that made like seventy thousand, um but it's still a significant amount of money when all they did was pay their pay their rent 
every month, you know, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, they pay their rent, they allow the equity gain to, you know, to bill for them. And then they, most of them kept the money there if they didn't sell, mm -hmm. uh, but they went and bought um, additional properties. And, and that get, that makes me, whew, that does something to me. Yeah. Get me so excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have had sailors who, uh, who have gotten into the real estate game and um, have been doing very well with it. That is awesome. That is so cool. Um, and I, I, I want to say thank you so much for sharing on here um, your solid advice, because I feel like I, I learned something like I didn't <laughs> even think that my impact was as big because, you know, we just do our job. Mm -hmm. But thank you for for sharing um, hey, just how important it is that we're impactful to one another, um, mm -hmm. that we're helping other people, even in our careers. Um, and if we just continue to do what's right by other people, then what's good will come to us. And so thank Absolutely. you so much again, Master Chief, for just sharing some solid wisdom for us. <laughs> thank you so much for having me and good luck to you and your and your civilian as well as your uh, your career in the Navy. So and if you have any other questions, you have my information. So feel free to reach out. Perfect. Thank you so much.